Hi, I'm Gregory Mansfield. I'm the rector here at the Episcopal Church of St. Bernard de Claveau in Miami. Behind me is the ancient Spanish monastery, which was constructed in northern Spain about 887 years ago, in the early part of the 12th century. For over 750 years, the monastery served as a Cistercian monastery in northern Spain. After a civil war in the 1830s, the monastery was abandoned. After 100 years, William Randolph Hearst purchased the monastery and outbuildings and had them shipped stone by stone, 35,000 stones, to the United States. They were reassembled here in Miami in the 1950s. This has been a place of worship, a place where people bring their dead to mourn them. They bring their babies and children to baptize them and dedicate them to God. Being Miami, we have our 15-year-old quinceañeras who celebrate in our chapel and then with parties here afterwards. And couples come from all over the United States and yea, verily the world to have their marriages blessed here. And week after week, we have a celebration of the Holy Communion here in the chapel. We invite you now to join us as part of this legacy. I'm standing in front of the ancient gates, which came off of a nobleman's home. These huge iron gates weigh about 2,000 pounds each. You'll notice over the top, you will see a medallion in the center, which has the helmet and face of the nobleman from whose home this was originally a part. Come with me now as we worship at the ancient Spanish monastery.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you've given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was good. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was good. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants with seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was good. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants with seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be light in the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was good. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God saw and God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and living creatures that move of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, 
and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Salmo 8. Señor soberano nuestro, tu nombre domina en toda la tierra. Tu gloria se extiende más allá del cielo. Con la alabanza de los pequeños, de los niños de pecho, has construido una fortaleza por causa de tus enemigos, para acabar con rebeldes y adversarios. Cuando veo el cielo que tú mismo hiciste, y la luna, y las estrellas que pusiste en, el, en él, pienso, ¿qué es el hombre? ¿Qué es el ser humano? ¿Por qué lo recuerda y te preocupas por él? Pues lo hiciste casi como un dios. Lo rodeaste de honor y dignidad. Le, hiciste autoridad, le diste autoridad sobre tus obras. Los pusiste por encima de todo. Sobre las ovejas y los, bue y los bueyes, sobre los animales salvajes. Sobre las aves que vuelan por el cielo. Sobre los peces que viven en el mar. Sobre todo lo que hay en el mar, Señor soberano nuestro, tu nombre domina toda la tierra. Gloria al Padre, al Hijo, en el Espíritu Santo, como era en el principio y será por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Our reading from the New Testament is St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the church members here send their greetings to you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Buenos días, hermanos. Quisiera darles a todos una muy cordial bienvenida. Quisiera saludarlos en el nombre del Padre a todos nuestros hermanos que no están aquí presentes, a todas mis amistades, a todos mis familiares, mis hermanos, a mi madre, a todos mis tíos que están a dentro aquí de los Estados Unidos y fuera también de los Estados Unidos. También quiero darle en nombre de la Iglesia San Bernardo y su servidor mi más sincero y sentido pésame a todas aquellas personas que por causa de esta enfermedad del coronavirus han perdido a un ser querido, a un amigo, a un tío, algún primo, que reciban de parte de nosotros nuestro más sincero pésame. Que sus almas y las almas de todos los difuntos, por la misericordia de Dios, descansen en paz. Las lecturas de hoy en el capítulo 1 en el libro de Génesis comienzan con un relato de la creación del mundo. Ahí se narra cómo Dios empieza una intensa actividad creadora para formar el mundo poco a poco. Y en su actividad, en su lucha por su creación, puso primero las estrellas, en pocas palabras. Después puso la luz, puso dos luces, una grande y una pequeña. La luz grande fue para iluminar el día la luz pequeña para dar iluminación en la noche. Luego el Creador llenó el cielo con las aves que vuelan dominando los aires y finalmente pobló la tierra con toda clase de animales silvestres y salvajes. Y así sucesivamente se fue dando la, la creación poco a poco para que hoy en día gozáramos de esa creación todo el ser humano. En el libro de Génesis Dios pronuncia una palabra asombrosa. Hagamos al hombre a su imagen y semejanza. Quiere decir que Dios tiene forma humana. No, ¿verdad? Dios nunca pudo tener una forma humana. No, ¿verdad? Porque recordemos que Dios es espíritu y no tiene ninguna apariencia física. No tiene ninguna forma. Solamente el Hijo que se hizo humano. He ahí la creación del de hombre de Adán, 
en el sexto día de la creación cuando le dio a Eva para continuar con su plan de la creación del mundo. Quiero hacer un énfasis en las lecturas y en este tiempo tan difícil en los que hemos tenido que estar separados física y socialmente a causa del COVID-19. No sabemos con certeza cómo y el por qué su existencia y cómo se ha propagado esta enfermedad. ¿Sería por medio de un invento químico? No lo sabemos. ¿Sería por algún laboratorio, algún escape, alguna sustancia química? No lo sabemos. Muchas cosas y muchos comentarios y las cuales ninguna son reales por el momento. Pero sí se está llevando a cabo una investigación que durante su transcurso se podría tener buenos resultados y obtener la verdad cómo se propagó y cómo se llevó a cabo esa enfermedad. A pesar de ese aislamiento temporario con nuestra vida cotidiana a causa de esta pandemia, nos hemos mantenido informados por los medios de comunicación, por la televisión, por teléfono, por texto, con nuestros familiares, con nuestros amigos, trabajando desde nuestras casas, oyendo la noticia y dándonos de cuenta cómo avanza esa enfermedad dándonos de cuenta lo que está pasando en cada estado aquí en los Estados Unidos, dándonos de cuenta por las manifestaciones en protesta de todos los manifestantes en cada estado, exigiendo justicia por la muerte de George Floyd. La muerte es algo inevitable. La muerte no tiene remedio. La muerte es llanto y es algo muy duro, algo que lleva uno en el corazón. Es algo que es que no lo podemos evitar. Es un recuerdo, una herida que no tiene sanación, que nos queda ahí de por vida. Dios en su creación también dejó plasmado los momentos del nacer y morir. Así como Él nació, llegó al mundo, hizo la creación y también murió, se entregó por todos nosotros para que nosotros pudiéramos disfrutar de todo lo que hay ahora aquí en este mundo. Por eso tenemos que estar preparados también nosotros, porque nos va a llegar el momento, no sé ni cómo nos va a llevar a cada uno de nosotros ese momento que tendremos que morir. Nosotros hemos llegado al mundo a cumplir una misión que se nos ha encomendado a cada ser humano. Y tenemos que prepararnos para cuando llegue ese momento. Hoy es domingo. Es día de la Santísima Trinidad. Es el dogma fundamental del cristianismo. Así se le reconoce a la Santísima Trinidad como el dogma fundamental del cristianismo. ¿Por qué? Porque consiste en la creación de que Dios es uno y trino. ¿Y por qué es trino? Es 
por la unidad conformada de tres personas, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. Por eso es que es trino y es una sola persona, la Trinidad y es santo. Es por eso que el Señor nos ha llamado a bautizar desde muy pequeño. Todos nosotros en nuestra familia nos han enseñado cuando ya tenemos un mes, dos meses, que llevamos a nuestros hijos a bautizarlos a la iglesia. ¿Por qué? Porque digámoslo en pocas palabras que es un sello para crecer con Dios para crecer en la fe del cristianismo y bautizarnos a esa edad. Hay muchas personas que no lo hacen a esa edad y llegan a una edad grande y se dan de cuenta muchas veces y dicen, yo tenía que hacer mi bautizo cuando yo estaba niño, porque lo tenía que hacer como manda Dios. Y se llegan a bautizar a una edad de 20, 30 años. Hay muchas personas que al momento de morir quieren ser bautizados por esa razón también. Cuando entienden que el bautizo es por esa razón que tienen que hacerlo. Por muchas razones también. Con base por eso es que la declaración de Jesús cuando dice en las Sagradas Escrituras que el Padre y Él son una sola persona. Que el que conoce al Padre, lo conoce a Él también. Y si no lo conocen al Padre, no lo conocen a Él. De verdad que tiene sentido también, porque si yo le digo a una persona, yo creo en Dios, y la otra me, persona me dice a mí, yo creo en el Espíritu Santo, nos estamos contradiciendo porque estamos diciendo lo mismo. Él está creyendo en Dios siempre porque es una sola persona. Dios nada más, y él, la persona está confundida creyendo que es otra persona, y se está hablando de una sola persona. Finalmente, está, con, está consciente de que nuestra naturaleza, creada por el amor de Dios, nos llena de fe y esperanza. Y de que unidos venceremos la oscuridad, siendo siempre solidarios unos con otros. Revivamos nuestra fe, queridos hermanos, hacia Dios, porque pronto llegará ese momento tan glorioso para que estemos todos unidos, como Dios manda, como Dios quiere para que nos encuentre a todos así como al querido siempre. Que la gracia del Señor Jesucristo y el amor de Dios y la participación del Espíritu Santo estén con todos ustedes. Amén. Let us recite together the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. The prayers of the people this morning are a litany composed by the Reverend Brother Richard, Richard Helmer, BSG. Like me, Brother Richard is a member of the Brotherhood of St. Gregory. He is also the rector of the Episcopal Church of Our Savior in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Let us pray. Prayers for Minneapolis. Prayers for George Floyd and his family. Prayers for those pushed by extreme conditions into extreme rage. Prayers for communities bearing the unbearable burdens of racism. Prayers for healing, the blindness that leads to neglect. Prayers for all of us who believe might makes us right. Prayers for leaders who failed to lead. Prayers for ancestors who taught us to hate rather than love. Prayers for those today whose love grows cold. Prayers for the clenched fists too late to open. Prayers for the privileged, the underprivileged, the impoverished, and all of us children of greed. Prayers for our children who watch hope turn to ashes. Prayers for those whose anger turns into violence. Prayers for those who labor for peace but without justice. Prayers for those who try to seek justice and find no peace. Prayers for those building hope in the face of despair. Prayer for those struggling for right where the only choices seem wrong. Prayer for those struggling for rights where their inheritance its oppression. Prayers for those who, whose only language is force. Prayer for those who stand by where action is needed. Prayers for those who act where restraint is required. Prayers for mercy where no mercy is found, for love where compassion is absent, for new life where death reigns this day, for wisdom where rage burns now, for leadership where we need it, and accountability where authority is still granted. Prayers for us, for all our collapses of courage, Prayers for you, where I neglected to see you. Prayers for me, where my failings are now laid open as wounds. Prayers for we, lost amid the flames. Prayers for all who thirst for righteousness for a brighter day. Prayers this Trinity Sunday for the Spirit to come and quench our burning hearts with her tears. The road ahead is hard. God give us the strength, the will, the heart to walk it together. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Yes, indeed, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Welcome. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning, whether you're worshiping across town in Miami or across the globe. We're glad to welcome you here to the ancient Spanish monastery. This is an amazing parish, and I, I just want to call out two of our special volunteers. Raul Diego Vizaga is a member of our church's board, the Vestry, and he is our director of photography, and he's doing all the editing. We're so grateful for Raul's work with us and for his equipment. He's taken time out for doing commercials for the Yacht Barber and other places around town to come and be here to support us. And this is part of his ministry to his parish church. And also to Gretchen Abidar. Gretchen was married here a few years ago, and I know she's watching this morning with uh, her husband Roni and her two boys. Gretchen is our chat monitor on Facebook. So as you send in your prayer request and have other questions about the monastery and our, our ministries here, you'd like more information and you want to send her your email or your phone for text messages, Gretchen will be the person who will be responding to you. Gretchen, we thank you for all of the ministry and the work that you do here for the church that you love. The question I'm getting every single day is, when is the monastery gonna open again to have live in-person church services? Well, we don't know the answer to that. Our vestry only began to deal with that question two weeks ago, and this coming Tuesday, we'll wrestle with the reopening procedures, which we will then submit to our bishop and diocesan leaders for approval. And then we will wait for the city and the diocese to find all of the benchmarks taking place that will allow us to reopen. And of course, as soon as we do that, you can be sure that we will contact you and we'll put that on all of our social media platforms so that you can plan to attend. I can tell you at this point, there will be a limited number of people who will be able to attend services in person. You will have to make reservations and sign in so we can do contact tracing. And there will be limited ways people will be able to receive communion and to participate in the service. Once we have all of those things worked out, we will get that information to you as soon as possible so you can make plans to join us when you're ready to be here at the ancient Spanish monastery. Story. This is a praying church, and I hope that you will send your prayer requests through one of these um, forms of social media to let us know of your concerns as we pray for our community and world to be able to pray for you as well. You can support this ministry by giving a donation. You can do that by text. The number's there at the bottom of your screen. If you just text the amount you want to give, that'll start a dialogue and we'll be able to have that money put right directly into our church's account. You can also give to us online. You can do that by checking with us on social media or again on our website. And there's even a place for you to mail in a check. Your donations are needed now more than ever. We count not only on the money that comes to us through our collections of our members, through their ties and pledges, but also of the many guests and visitors who are worshiping with us here at the monastery. Thank you all, especially our members who've been so generous during this time. We would not be able to do what we're doing now without your support. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure where moth and rust can corrupt, and thieves can break through to steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt and thieves cannot break through to steal. For where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also.
Of your charity, I ask you to remember to pray for the repose of the soul of Rafael Rios. This is Medardo's cousin who died yesterday morning. The special intention of the Mass today is for the repose of the souls of George Floyd, Brianna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Te damos gracias, oh Dios, por la bondad y el amor que tú nos has manifestado en la creación, en el llamado a Israel para ser tu pueblo, en tu verbo revelado a través de los profetas, y sobre todo en el verbo hecho carne, Jesús tu Hijo. Pues en la plenitud de los tiempos le has enviado para que se encanara de María la Virgen, a fin de ser el Salvador y Redentor del mundo. En él nos has librado del mal y nos has hecho dignos de estar en tu presencia. En él nos ha secado del horror a la verdad, del pecado a la rectitud, y de la muerte a la vida. En la víspera de su muerte por nosotros, nuestro Señor Jesucristo tomó pan, y dándote gracias, lo partió, y lo dio a sus discípulos, y dijo, tomen y comen. Este es mi cuerpo, entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto como memorial mío. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly kingdom, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mother of God, Blessed Bernard, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Señor, no soy digno, no soy digno, no soy digno. The prayer of spiritual communion. May Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer your praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. La oración de comunión espiritual. Jesús mío, creo que estás verdaderamente presente en el sagrado sacramento del altar. Deseo ofrecerte alabanza y acción de gracias mientras proclamo tu resur resurrección. Te amo por encima de todas las cosas y te anhelo en mi alma. Como no te puedo recibir en el sacramento de tu cuerpo y sangre, entra al menos espiritualmente en mi corazón. Límpiame y fortaleceme con tu gracia, Señor Jesús, y nunca permitas que me separe de ti, que pueda vivir en ti y tú en mí, en esta vida y en la vida venidera. Amén. Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Y ahora que los santos ángeles te rodean y te protejan, que nuestra Señora y los santos recen por ti, que el Señor Jesús en el sacramento te fortalezca. Y la bendición de Dios, majestad eterna, palabra encarnada y espíritu sustentador, sea sobre ti y permanezca contigo para siempre. Amén. The Mass is now ended, so now let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs>